Hi, I'm Lucy Lacanienta, Research Assistant for the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with Dr. Jennifer Lane. Jennifer C. Lane is a Neely Maxwell Research in Associate at the Maxwell Institute for Religious Scholarship and a Professor Emerita at Brigham Young University, Hawaii. She received her PhD in Religion with an emphasis in Christianity from Claremont Graduate University, and she's the author of Let's Talk About Temple and Ritual and Finding Christ in the Covenant Path, Ancient Insights for Modern Life, as well as numerous articles and other books. Thank you so much for being here oh, today. It's a pleasure, Lucy. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Grateful. The piece that we'll be talking about today is this painting here behind us entitled With No Exception of Persons by Erendira de Martinez Hernandez. And the chapters that we'll be pairing it with today are 35 chapters 17 through 19. All right, to get us started, can you explain how this artwork interprets the scriptures that it's based on? Well, to my mind, I think that this really draws on um, the really beautiful discussion of Christ with the children in mm -hmm. 3 Nephi 17. So Christ has um, blessed the sick who've come to him and brought, been brought to him, and then at that point, maybe I'll just read a little passage from Absolutely. 3 Nephi 17. It says, And when he had said these words, he wept, and the multitude bare record of it, and he took their little children one by one and blessed them, and prayed unto the Father for them. And when he had done this, he wept again. And he spake unto the multitude and said unto them, Behold your little ones. So, so those verses 21 through 23. Uh, my sense is that Erendira de Martinez Hernandez is she's really leaning into this last phrase where he's presenting mm -hmm. the children because we're not seeing the blessing we're not seeing the sort of active but we are i think seeing sort of the aftermath of what mm -hmm. happens like what does blessing look like what does it feel like to be blessed by the lord mm -hmm. and to be in that condition of of unity of reconciliation of peace and harmony in his presence and this last phrase where he says behold your little ones mm -hmm. i think is that invitation to them and also to us to see how the love that Christ has for all his children, but particularly the children mm -hmm. of his children, <laughs> that, that the really special relationship between Christ and little ones. You see here Christ with um, the, the four children and they're very close together. You, mm -hmm. you see again that yeah. unity, they're being brought together and, um, and that I think is part of what what blessing looks like I think even though mm -hmm. we're not seeing hands laid on their heads but that they're the, the unity the connection and the peace and happiness that's present mm -hmm. it's visible in all of their faces is um, is that sense of beholding mm -hmm. the purity the joy um, the goodness that these children embody yeah those are beautiful things to think about uh, can you contextualize the piece in terms of the larger context of LDS theology and art for us definitely so um, within w what we have here, I think, is th a theme that is particular, it's not unusual in the history of Christian art, mm -hmm. but, but is a particular, uh, because of the passage in First Nephi 19, 23, where Nephi talks about likening scriptures unto us. Mm -hmm. And so this, this desire to bring, and again, it shows up many times throughout Christian art, but making it contemporary. It's mm -hmm. not so much about capturing the past, but making, likening it, like how would it be like to have Christ with, and so as a Mexican artist, I think what Erendira is doing is is making the story present in her cultural context. So you mm -hmm. see um, contemporary people, traditional Mexican clothing with the embroidery, and um, you see, the, I think, the dark hair of you know, the indigenous people, yeah. um, maybe going back to, to either Aztec or Mayan, but, but you know, more that sense of these are the people that were here before the conquistadors. This is mm -hmm. like, this is our heritage. That this Christ coming to our people is something I think she's trying to make present and reclaim and mm -hmm. putting, putting that in a visual context where you see, for example, those prominent banana leaves and yeah. I know about banana leaves because we I taught at BYU Hawaii with my husband and we had a banana tree in our backyard for many years uh -huh. and um, and so very familiar the sort of setting of a, a tropical climate yeah. which would be appropriate for Mexico and making this real making it present 
in a way that a contemporary audience would look at and say it's not just about the past, but it's 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 about now mm -hmm. and Christ with Mexican children in a, a very specific context. Yeah, that's beautiful and such an important thing to be able to like relate ourselves to mm -hmm. the scriptures. Um, in Third Nephi chapter 17, we see a really heavy emphasis on the idea of healing. What does this painting or passage teach us about how Christ's healing power can be accessible to all of God's children? Yeah. And, and I do think you know, this is a fascinating chapter because you have the healing um, of all the people and then it moves mm -hmm. very specifically to having all the little children, all the young children brought to him. And, and here it doesn't necessarily talk as the verses we looked at as um, talks about him, they took the little children one by one and blessed them and he prayed unto the Father for them. And so earlier in the chapter we have healing in a very specific sense of, of having people who had wounds or um, birth defects or, or something that had happened to them being made whole. But here I think there's this sense of healing in, in a more spiritual sense of unity, of being sort of brought into the presence because the sort of the, the the spiritual sickness and death is being separated from God and so spiritual healing in life is being brought back into his presence and yeah. so I think part of that healing is just that closeness and that that she's trying to make present here by putting these four children just I mean they're clustered so mm -hmm. tightly in that picture they're right I mean their faces are right next to each other yeah. and so there's that sense of of healing in terms I think of the rift between us and mortality and our sort of fallen condition and then the, the healing of being unified through Christ and brought mm -hmm. back to him and being with him. So that I, I, to me is what, but there's also I think some, some symbols that are being played with mm -hmm. um, in addition to just the presence and the unity um, rather than separation but you have the water that, so you have a river there mm -hmm. and then there's also water in the pots and so of course Christ is the living water is a sort of the healing from the thirst and the drought of life without him and then the healing and the, the life-giving um, influence of his spirit in our lives so those are I think very clear symbols of course a little lamb also pointing to Christ mm -hmm. his atoning sacrifice the, that he died so that we can have life so these, these are life-giving symbols and there, there's a few other symbols that I I don't know if I know the cultural context well enough mm -hmm. to, to be able to interpret with the bird, the butterfly, um, even though I know monarch butterflies are um, certainly a, a, a sign of, of life mm -hmm. and um, because of the, the, the growth process a butterfly yeah. goes through. And that's that, their resurrection. Exactly. Yeah. So it looks like they're dead, they're in this little tomb and then new life. And yeah. they, they don't start that way, and then they turn into something that is new. And I th that might point again to Christ, like you said, mm -hmm. resurrection and the new life that we have through conversion, through the influence mm -hmm. of the Spirit. And um, in addition to water, bird, butterfly, um, flowers, there's it. I think it's particularly interesting that both Christ is holding a book and the little boy here are, are holding scriptures. It's like they're having a scripture study together, <laughs> which, yeah. um, of course, you know, historically, and this I think is where it's making it very contemporary, the kind of the codex version of books is, mm -hmm. is what we have now. And so that's what's going to be familiar for the, the viewer. But I think, I can only think that they, they point to scriptures, black cover, yeah. you know. And so you have this, um, Christ is sharing scriptures, but this sense that, they're sharing, I, again, I think this togetherness, this unity, the sense of family and love of what you do together with a family. You study mm -hmm. scriptures and you enjoy beautiful nature. And so you feel that sense of being together, being taught, learning, and um, or he's like literally at the Savior's feet there yeah. and being taught by him. So I think all of those symbols point to a kind of healing power of spirit, life, the word, Christ's sacrifice, resurrection, mm -hmm. all pointing to, again, a spiritual kind of healing that, that he offers that's available for, for children and, of course, available for all of us. Yeah, wonderful. Will you share your personal reaction to this art piece and to sure. the scriptures? Yeah, so this is it's an interesting thing for me. As you mentioned, my PhD is in history of Christianity, mm -hmm. and I worked um, my dissertations on late medieval um, 
passion piety, particularly yeah. drew, tied to Jerusalem pilgrimage. And so I've spent a lot of time looking at artwork that is a little bit more rustic, a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, not the sort of fine art tradition, but, but designed for the sense of presenting Christ in a very immediate way, in a way that people could respond to. And in a way, this kind of reminds me of that, even though it's not passion piety. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like we don't see Christ dying. We don't see him on the cross or Mary holding him in a kind of pieta. Yeah. Um, but but the, the very sense of immediate, um, recognizable. So, so even though when I look at, you know, the, the kind of LDS art that I tend to to you know, they've just come to cultivate in my own life mm -hmm. through the years. It, it, I tend to lean more maybe to sort of like Minerva Tyker with sort of impressionistic influence yeah. or um, Jorge Coco Sant'Angelo with his mm -hmm. sacro cubism, you know, a little bit more abstracted, both yeah. of them. And whereas this is much more of a sense of very realistic, very trying to, um, to make the what's real present, it, it mm -hmm. does bring me back though to my studies of late medieval art and a sense of wanting to, to make something realistic with a sense of trying to move the audience, mm -hmm. of trying, if you, if you feel, can feel connected, you can feel like this is real, I'm seeing yeah. in late medieval passion party, I'm seeing Christ you know, bleeding or I'm seeing you know the, the, the people standing there mourning that it moves you, whereas here it's 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 more the the positive. This is like post-resurrection uh -huh. Christ. Of course, that's the the beautiful, powerful message of Third Nephi from mm -hmm. eleven on. Is this is the risen Christ, and so this is this immediate sense of Christ. Um, what is the life? Not so much the emphasis on what he suffered and died for us, but mm -hmm. what is now he lives and this, yeah. this witness of the Book of Mormon. He lives. And that through him we can have life, and so I think by making this immediate, and again, you know, some of it seems a little folksy. You know, you've got a geranium, for example. Like uh -huh. a geranium is 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 not a it's not an exotic flower. Mm -hmm. I, again, I don't know the Mexican context well enough to know exactly what it would mean, but I know um, that it's. It, it seems sort of ordinary in some sense, at least from mm -hmm. an American context, people have geraniums in pots. and um, But this, I think, if you look at it in context where you have orange and then the orange butterfly, and then you kind of see that there's orange in the back as background, that, it, mm -hmm. that, it, it's, that it, I think it transcends what might say, oh, like, this is just an ordinary little house plant. Yeah. But, but instead seeing it in terms of, um, sort of bringing this kind of glow of maybe a sunrise yeah. and again this new life mm -hmm. that, that Christ offers. And so I think that coming out of this, um, a tradition of, of art that's focusing on realism and focusing on making something immediate and present, mm -hmm. that, that part of what Arendia de Martinez Hernandez is doing is helping us Kind of imagine what would it be like to be in this close friendship relationship with the Savior mm -hmm. if he were here now and to, to be in a little you know happy friend group of studying and learning and just enjoying being together and to me that's what this points to and so I appreciate her efforts to try to help us get a sense of, of that that offer that Christ has he wants mm -hmm. to be with us and I think this this is an invitation into that relationship yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your insights on this piece with us today. My pleasure. And thanks for joining us on this episode of Behold. <laughs>